I started to work in fashion. It wasn't my idea. I was living in Napoli in Italy and the Museum of Modern Art in New York published a book and fashion photographers basically steal everything. So they, they called me up from W and they said, would you like to, to work for us? And I said, no. And I said, well, everybody's copying you, so you can work for us or we can get somebody to copy you. <laughs> and I basically said, all right. And that was the beginning of like 11, 12 years of work with the same art director, uh, the same person. And that it was in, there was an enormous freedom and I, you know, to make your own work. Who doesn't like fashion? I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a big game. But actually, the reason that I did all those fashion stories for W was because they t took me to places and they paid for it. I think only did, I don't know if I ever did a story in New York City. So it started in um, Los Angeles and you know, then they gave me an award for that story. They, they're willing to pay more money to go to Havana or uh, Sao Paulo or wherever. Uh, that world is a little bit over now. It's very over. When I did The Hustlers, I had no gallery at all. I, I went to MoMA and I showed it to John Sarkowski, who was then, you know, the director. And he said, okay, you know, him and Peter Galassi, they gave me a show. So that was kind of the beginning of my career, though it wasn't the beginning of my career. Because everybody says, like, my, my, my career started with the show at MoMA. But it didn't really start then. It started long before then. The Hustler pictures were important to me because it was during the AIDS crisis, and my brother had just died of AIDS. And, yeah, I mean, it meant something to me. Uh, I mean, I wasn't trying to make a point, but I think the point is made when you're not trying to make it. And... Um, yeah, that was, that was a heavy time, very heavy, to be living in New York during that period. The street work pictures, you know, I, I always try to uh, get away from the conventions of photography, which is that if you know someone better, if you're more intimate, then the photograph is better. And those street works, I didn't know anybody. I never talked to anybody. I didn't ask them to do anything. Nobody really bothered me. They didn't even notice. Most of the time, no, because the lights that are used, they go off in a fraction of a second, a four hundredth of a second. And so they didn't even notice. Even though, for instance, in the heads, it looks like it's dark. It's not dark. It's the middle of the day. Uh, at that time, they were rebuilding Times Square. And so they had scaffolding everywhere. So I would put my lights in the scaffolding, like with, and they were connected to my camera with a, what they call a slave. And um, uh, most of the people didn't even notice. For the heads, I had to, had to use a huge lens, like for sports photographers, it's like this long. But it was a little bit difficult because every, not everybody's the same height. So what I had to do was put a piece of tape on the ground and I had the light there, or the light there, and it could only work in one place. 
I can't change it. Even the focus. I had to, with my assistant, set the focus. I couldn't change the focus because they come through the, the frame so fast. So when they step on a piece of tape, boom. And most of the time they didn't notice. There was no creative decision. Like if somebody stood there, they were part of it. And then you get lucky. And I've learned now that for, for what I do, luck, serendipity, whatever you want to call it, is a big part of it. Like I, I used to, in the beginning, try to make everything happen, control everything. Now I'm just waiting for luck. I can tell you exactly why I did it, because uh, on 9-11, uh, my son, like, uh, he went to school very near there, the World Trade Center, and um, he called me up, and I heard all this noise, but I thought, like, okay, it was always noise in New York. So he called me up and he said, Dad, plane just hit the World Trade Center and it's burning and people are jumping out and they're gonna die. Um, I mean the story goes on longer. I felt like I had to react but people were so sensitive. But I had a picture that was on the cover of the New York Times of a man inverted upside down. It was a famous picture. You can see the lines of the, uh, the windows and I kept that on my, um, in my office, like on the lamp. And I don't know, a couple of years later, I know it sounds weird, but I think they made a fetish out of the, the World Trade Center bombing. They used it as an excuse to go to war. They used it as an excuse to do a lot of things. Of course, it was a horrible event. Most of the people who, who went crazy weren't there. So I was there. And my idea that the pole, pole dancer thing was they're all, well, it didn't really turn out to be true, but they're all upside down. And so if it's a fetish, you know, sex is a fetish too. Uh, th that's how I came up with the idea. You know, right now, to be very, very honest, I'm, I'm exhausted. Uh, and this idea that you have to have everything figured out at the beginning is something that I've given up. Because that's, that was part of my work. You know, you set a, a, a system up and you execute it time and time again. And then you reduce it to what you think is good. Now I don't want to do that anymore. I do feel that there is, personally, there has to be some response in art as a photographer to the political situation that we all live in now. And I would like to find a way to do that that's not obvious. But yes, we live in a very divided world and I feel like I need to respond to it in some way or another as I have responded to other things. So I don't know exactly what to do. It's really complex now. Mm -hmm.